simply say this to young people of every faith in every country. You, more than anyone, have the ability to reimagine the world, to remake this world. Well, that was President Obama yesterday challenging young people during his speech from Cairo, Egypt. You know, Nicole Lappin, um, she's with us just about every day, and you, you help me stay dialed in. To I what, try. To what, it's a tough task. Well, it is a tough task to what young people are saying and what they're doing. Uh, you took a trip to Egypt recently. Right. I'm sort of, and you took a camera. I did. Best of all. So I'm curious as to what you expected before taking the trip in and what you heard from young people in Egypt. You know, it's so interesting. I didn't know what to expect. As a young American, yeah. I didn't know if young Arabs would hate me, mm. how they would treat me. Mm. And, and I brought that camera, and we talked about this before I right. went. And you told me, uh, don't plan for this story. Right, right, right. And I hate to say this, but you were right. You were absolutely right. Uh, a group of young Egyptians <laughs> invited me to their house for some tea yeah. and for some cake. And all of a sudden, they just started talking about stereotypes yeah. in the Middle East. So I started rolling. Terrific. Uh, well, honestly, there's a guy who said yeah. to me uh, that every one of you have a camel and you, each one of you have his own permits. Uh, and then I said, how do, we have, how do we have internet connection? He said, it's something magical because you're safaris and so, so you can get the internet. <laughs> So, Tony, they were saying, yeah, they don't ride camels. Yeah. They wear bikinis. They're not <laughs> terrorists, and they like Americans. Yeah. And a lot of them wanted to come here and live here. So I thought we'd continue this conversation oh, with a buddy of mine who has written extensively about mm. this in a book called Children of Jihad. He's also one of the youngest members of the planning staff at the State Department. Okay. So he's a big deal. Jared Cohen joins us live from Washington. Jared, good to see you. Good to see you, Nicole. And you have traveled extensively to the Middle East before you were in government. I know you spent a lot of time with all types of young people, even extremist groups, as a nice young Jewish boy from <laughs> Connecticut. I know you had a similar reaction that I did. Uh, what surprised you most? Um, I think my reaction was very similar to yours, Nicole, in that you know I'm a Jewish kid from Connecticut. I you know, traveled all throughout the Middle East, didn't know exactly what to expect, but I went in open-minded and I engaged with young people uh, based on their youth identity, not based on their religion, not based on their ethnicity, not based on their nationality, but based on a common denominator that we're basically the same age, we like doing the same things, we enjoy the same recreational indulgences, and you know, because of that, girls. we were able to build a real trust. Like you, girls. Did, did you just say girls? I'm, I'm, oh, okay. I'm just, it's in his book. All right, keep it real. Young people, Jared, make up 60% of this region. So this really, though, let's get real, this could be the biggest opportunity for peace in the region, right? I think it's absolutely the biggest opportunity. As you mentioned, youth are 60% of Muslim communities around the world. Uh, not only is this the world's largest demographic, but they're the ones who are the most similar to us. They're the ones who are the most connected through new technology. But also, on that last point, you know, this is an unbelievably important uh, moment in time in that this is the first generation that is connected digitally through internet and satellite TV and mobile phones the way that way the way that they are. Yeah, so, once so you get Tony into that, uh, then we can work on the <laughs> Middle East. We, we have seen select images, let's be honest, from Iran, but you were there. You have a different image of that country. What did you see when you were there? You know, again, this was before I was in government, but one of the things that I found is that young Iranians are more similar to us as young Americans than most people would imagine. And again, the easiest way for me to engage in a conversation about with, with young Iranians was to basically find the many things that uh, we enjoy in common, whether it's sports, whether it's music, whether it's a you know uh, a common set of issues we like to talk about. But it's also very important uh, when I was there that, that, that I realized a lot of young Iranians feel like we have certain stereotypes of them in America, but likewise, in America, you know, we have certain uh, stereotypes that we assume they have of us. And the best solution yeah. that you can possibly imagine for this is the same kind of people-to-people -people exchange that you engaged with in Egypt and that I experienced before I was in government and now that I'm in government is, is an experience that we need to bring to as many Americans and as many different people throughout the world as possible. And today we have the opportunity to do that. You know, Jared, I just want to bring up this poll really quickly. Tony, you've seen this. It shows the number of Americans with an unfavorable yeah. view of Islamic countries is now up. It's now 46% unfavorable compared, Jared, to 41% after the 9-11 attacks. So how do you and I, how does our generation change that? Well, I think it is all of our responsibilities as youth. Nobody understands youth better than they understand themselves. But in order to understand youth outside of your comfort zone, you need to be willing to click the mouse, tap the keyboard, and engage with a young person outside of 
you know, the usual set of individuals that you interact with. And again, with things like Facebook and Skype and cell phones and the variety of other different digital media outlets, you have the opportunity to engage at your fingertips. That's something that was not the case five years ago or even two years ago. And we need young Americans to take on the responsibility to engage, to be open-minded and to click that mouse and to tap that keyboard. There you go. Jared wow. Cohen, live from Washington. Tony, you have to do that as well. Just underscoring <laughs> really what we heard from the president there, that the under 30 generation in, in the Islamic world is the best hope for us in the world. Hey, thanks for bringing uh, Jared to our attention. You're welcome. He's, he's one of those young people that uh, you bring he actually, time to time. He was. Absolutely he was featured last rock. year, and we'll we'll put it on the blog as well. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole.